Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together to celebrate our God in word and in sacrament, let us open our hearts to his reconciling peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never despise of your, for you never despise of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, I will pour out the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and petition, and they shall look on him whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as the one who mourns for an only son. And they shall grieve over him as one who grieves over for a firstborn. On the day of the mourning in Jerusalem shall be as great as the mourning of Haddon Ramon in the place of Megiddo. On that day there shall be opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem a fountain to purify from sin and uncleanliness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My, my soul, soul is thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord, my God. O God. God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for, for you, you, O Lord, Lord my, my God. God. Thus I have gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for, you, for you, O Lord, o Lord my, God. my God. Thus will I bless you while I live, lifting up my hands. I will call upon your name, as with the riches of a banquet, shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for you, for you O Lord, Lord my, my God. God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My, my soul, soul is thirsting, thirsting for you, O Lord, Lord my, my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. 
for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free person. There is not male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendant, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I hear them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who do the crowd say that I am? Very important question. Significant in each of the Gospels, actually. This is one of those exciting times when this story is told in one way, one form or another in each of the Gospels, because we already know that each Gospel tells each story a little differently, because just like every individual, we tell stories in our own life rather differently, even though we're talking about the same event. This is an important gospel for us to begin to reflect upon because this, this is probably one of those more timeless questions in all of Scripture. Who do the crowds say that I am? This could be asked of the crowds today. Who do the crowds today say that Jesus is? And more importantly, who do you say that he is? Jesus defines himself very clearly after those disciples tell him, hey, you're John the Baptist, somebody saying you're Elijah, one of the prophets. But then he asked the more pointed question, but who do you say that I am? You hear what everybody else is saying, and so often and all too often, you and I are swayed by whatever everyone else is saying. You know how often we are swayed by whatever they are doing how we are swayed by whatever they are wearing, where they are going. I always ask the question, who's they? Nobody is able to answer that for me. I ask the question again, if everybody's doing it, who are they? Nobody can really say it, but it gives an imprint into everyone's life. You know it does for you and for me. And so we come around as people of faith, as Christian. Do you call yourself Christian? If you call yourself Christian, what does Christian mean? You and I one day, one time, at least one time in our life, we'll have to answer this question for ourselves. As we stand before the face of God, you will have to say who you are, in relationship to Jesus? Maybe it's a good idea to start now. Jesus was in prayer. 
he was praying in solitude when the disciples were with him. And in the context of that prayer, as a conclusion of that prayer, as a culmination of that prayer, Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? You see, don't forget that he was just in solitude in prayer. How often do you and I spend in solitude and in prayer, not listening to everyone else, almost not caring? So Jesus is discovering again, yes, Jesus is discovering again who he is. He is being reminded, because let's not forget, he is human just like you and me. All too often we think that Jesus is God. Yes, he is God. And because he's God, that he's this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, he is all that. But least we forget, he is human. He is human, and so he needs to be reminded. He is reminded in prayer, oh, this is who I am. So he is not swayed by what people are saying about him. He's not swayed how people are trying to define him. He is not swayed by how people want him to be and what they want him to be. And so Jesus hears all of this and most importantly stays the course. He understands who he is. He is in communion. He is in relationship. He is in prayer with the Father. And because he is in such deep prayer, his life becomes that prayer. Not that he's saying words all the time, but that prayer becomes his identity, and his identity becomes his life. And so that's why he is able to stay the course, because he is in that constant communion with God the Father. And he will call God his Father. That's one of the more revolutionary things that Jesus does. He calls God Father expresses right up front that unbelievably intimate relationship. It's a relationship of knowing who he is and who God is. And so he shares that the Son of Man will suffer, be rejected by everybody. He'll be killed and then be raised. A couple of lines changed human history. A couple of lines can change you and me and our history, but more importantly, our future. To begin to follow him, to really ask ourselves, how well do I deny myself so that I might invite myself into that closer union with God? To deny myself, to not be defined by anyone or anything else, than God himself. That example is Jesus Christ. And to take up that cross. Sometimes we think that the cross is a bad thing, it's such a heavy thing, it's such a nuisance. But for Christ, it was freedom. The heart and soul of all authentic freedom is to be in union with God and in Jesus Christ. And to deny ourselves to really discover ourselves and to embrace that cross. And so as you and I hear these words today, it's an invitation to define ourselves by this. People are going to say many things about Jesus. People are going to say many things about you and about me. But if we stay the course as Jesus did, we will not forget and always remember that we are of God, and we are encouraged by Jesus to stay the course until we find and discover God in our prayer, in our life, directed to him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless mercies of our God, let us now open our hearts in these prayers of petition before our God. Let us pray that we may continue to grow in the life of Christ alive in each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we might come to respect more deeply the sacredness of all created life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to embrace the cross of Jesus Christ in our lives and to know the true, authentic meaning of freedom, to freely follow Jesus to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, as we open our hearts before you, we trust that you will continue to strengthen and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done. done on earth, earth as, as it is, it is in, heaven. in heaven. Give, give us, us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with devotion may be our pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless us, who is Father, Son, 
and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.